So if you've got a huge passion for photography but maybe you feel Lightroom is holding you back a little, this video is for you because this is what I wish I knew after doing the most tutorials someone's probably ever done in Lightroom. We're condensing it and we're going over what I wish I knew. So seven years ago my very first camera broke and I couldn't get my money back for my broken camera but it took a whole year to get my money back for this broken camera so I was there just practicing editing in Lightroom that's when I started my YouTube channel and 1000 lessons on Lightroom later seven years later this is where we are so if you share the same passion for photography as me it's a really really big role in today's age and the gear is becoming less important creating mood with your photography or unique styles signature looks is becoming more important to separate each other that can take so many years to master so diving deep into Lightroom was the best decision of my life because I've dedicated the last six or seven years to mastering Lightroom and putting together the best educational platform for it. One of the best decisions of my life and maybe every photographer's best decision would be to master Lightroom. It's 70% or 50% depending on the photo makes or breaks photos camera gear is just not as important as it used to be it's becoming all about the editing unique styles signature looks standing out from other photographers and editing is really where we can do that the most so here's a few things I just wish I honestly knew uh, a long time ago in my Lightroom journey layers within Lightroom like the tools down the side there is a correct order to use them or tools interlink with each other and it can get very confusing when tools are um, affecting each other in a way you don't expect and that really leads to Lightroom just not doing what you want Lightroom to do. Let's go over two examples of tools interacting, being interwoven, making things really confusing. So the first one is sliders and curves. What's the difference between them? There is nothing about Lightroom to tell us how to use these tools together, which one is better for what. So let's go into the differences of them. Let's get an image like this one up. Okay, so if we drop the highlights, you can see we can see the mountains better. And then if we increase it, they get blown out, but you can see more detail here. If we drop here, the image kind of just gets darker. And we necessarily don't see as much detail. So if you want to see the mountains back there, drop the whites, drop the highlights, or drop the exposure. And then, but if we were to do that in the curves, you can see how we just we're not necessarily getting detail back there but highlights and whites we see more detail so let's do this in the shadows to say our image is kind of dark if we want to see more detail here you can bring up the blacks or you can bring up the shadows but if we were to do this in the curves and we have something like this it's just going to give a fade to our image. There is no way to get this effect with the sliders here. You need to go watch the free trainings if you don't understand curves and the sliders. This is about the difference of them. So now we have a fade and there's no way to achieve this fade using the sliders here because the sliders would just increase detail. So some people say, you know, I used to say that um, the curves does not bring out more detail but sliders do it's not necessarily true though i see everyone else saying that as well curves do bring out detail and then you hear even more detail and then we're starting to lose detail up there so it it technically does bring out detail it's just it's more of the shape of the curve that determines that so an s curve your curve will look roughly like this. So if we're lifting up, we're getting a fade. We're bringing down, we're getting a fade and we're not getting like detail back. Back in Adobe version 2008 or something, um, highlights was actually called detail. It's now called highlights. Yeah, so curves can bring out detail, but it's just that no one really does wacky curves like this okay so that brings me to the next point where curves 
is very, very much about your style. And then exposure up here, all these sliders, is a bit more about exposing the image correctly, fixing exposure, and then curves is a bit more putting that unique style to your image. I'd say, but bringing down the highlights and whites and blacks, these still contribute to style. It's not 100% just exposing your image, correcting your image. It's got a decent amount to do to your unique style, but I'd say curves is even more so. Really, really determines your style and whatnot. So the curves is underneath the sliders here. I would say the sliders come before the curves. These curves are like parameters, they're boundaries, it boxes in your adjustments here, okay? So you can't brighten. If you bring down your curves here, let's bring down the exposure. Histogram here, you can't make anything brighter past that point. So the curves contain your adjustments of the sliders. You can think of it like that. So it's the same with the black point. So if you lift the black point, you're going to get a fade and no matter how dark you make your image you, you can't make anything darker than this point here so now we're operating within this brightness up here so this just gives a crazy amount of control for your style because if you were making your style just off like four sliders you're going to have a very generic style there's no uniqueness to your looks but then you combine it with curves and you can see how many plots you can make in these curves and many different directions you can go and then when you learn um, how these tools actually work together and you understand really in depth um, the differences between these two you can learn to use them together and there are so many different types of curves like so many different types of curves these curves over here are part of my free preset pack um, free curve presets because I think curves are the most important tool by far that no one is teaching or they're teaching just the most generic curve you can think of I like to teach every type of style and I've done over 300 Lightroom tutorials recreating styles and just every style just requires different curves so yeah download the free presets curve presets if you like so that's just one example of what makes Lightroom confusing for most people wish I knew it Okay, one other example of tools interlinking with each other, making things really confusing is, okay, zoom in here. Let's take a look at HSL, the most popular way to fix skin tones, get the color you want. Look at all the reds. There is like a normal amount of reds. Looks good. If we were to say shift the primary and quite a few presets have primary adjustments and then do you can now see her whole face is reds. So calibration is determining what reds are. And some people don't know that and they're just playing in here and they can't get the color they want, but they need to think how everything is working together. So they can, um, like you should have redness in the lips. And like if your white balance is off in camera, like you might not have that um, little bit of redness in the shadowy skin tones or the lips. And then same goes with uh, white balance. So if we make the image really cold, over exaggerated example, and slide the reds, the reds are now gone. So calibration and temperature determine your HS cell. Yeah, this is just one of the things I learned trying to recreate so many of these edits over the last seven years. Yeah, all these tools are really, really intertwined. There's actually a lot more going on that we won't get into this video. And understanding how all these tools interlink and react is how some people get really, really, really unique styles are very hard to imitate. Because when I first began, I was just, I looked at Lightroom very mathematically and I was like there must be a combination of settings to get this person's style so I was very frustrated tried super hard to get these people's styles and then I started to learn these things self teach myself honestly because yeah Lightroom is just full of tips and tricks out there and no one's really diving deep into how to create styles color palettes reasoning of color and stuff like that methods of editing systems it's all like tips and tricks and over editing and just ridiculous stuff you can think there's just an endless amount of styles and combinations you can do and then we cover them all in the course because every other course i know of in the world um, for lightroom only teaches one style one perspective 
and this um, inside color and editing mastery we cover just every style you can think of because there is so many styles so many perspectives you can edit um, that's why I've got so many guest editors teaching and then I really enjoy seeing all these guest editors teach as well because I'm still learning myself even after a thousand videos now in Lightroom I love looking at people's styles and being really surprised on how crazier s curve there they're using a lot of you guys like my youtube youtube lessons five years ago three years ago um, but i was just guessing in a lot of those tutorials and that's why i really love that inside coloring and editing mastery we we have the actual photographer teaching us and it's not me guessing because yeah matching one photo is very very different to matching a feed like I can definitely match other people's photo for one photo, definitely. But um, that doesn't mean that those edits will translate into a nice cohesive feed. But it does if we get the actual source of um, the photographer's edit and how they actually edit. And it's not me guessing like my last 300 Lightroom tutorials. Differences in curves. So there is no right curve or wrong way or the best curve. There's I see a lot of YouTube tutorials out there they're doing a lesson on curves and they're preaching a certain type of curve it completely depends on the style you want there is so many different curves i'll put some on screen look at this curve look at this style look at this curve look at this style. so completely depends on the style you want so you need to learn what the curves do like how like how they scientifically work and then it's about learning styles because what you do with the curves completely depends on the style you want when i was learning i was frustrated or i i was confused when i thought an s curve was the best curve they're so dependent on the style you want but yeah hopefully these images here gives you an idea of just how how many different curves there are out there i've got free curve presets i've got a uh, free curve training so we're not going to cover that here in this this can get a bit advanced, but um, yeah, you need to understand how color reacts in different lighting scenarios, and then that it changes your approach in Lightroom. So when you learn things like mastering curves, you learn how to place colors in your image where you want, but the curve, if you don't know already, that uses brightness to place colors. So depending on how bright your image is, where you are placing those colors, are you targeting the skin tones? Are you targeting the shadows? Are you working in highlights? I just throw this one in there because obviously my last 300 Lightroom tutorials, I was just trying to match one photo. After doing like a hundred tutorials, I realized how important this is and, and I started to self-teach myself how to get people's feed photo to photo so it's the only course in the world teaching more than one style it's got every style you can think of every other course i know of it's only one style it's only one perspective but if you want to find your own style you need to take in different perspectives and yeah catch you in the next one